In a world where the no pain, no gain mentality reigns supreme, it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that intense stretching is the only way to achieve greater flexibility. But Dr. Andrew Huberman, a renowned neuroscientist at Stanford University, is here to challenge the notion. According to his research, the secret to maintaining lifelong flexibility lies not in the intensity of your stretches, but in the consistency of your practice. In this video, I'm going to review his stretching protocol and chime in with my experience as someone who went from Tin Man to Superman as an adult who's never stretched before. Ready to get flexy? Let's go. Dr. Huberman's stretching protocol is refreshingly simple and accessible to anyone, regardless of their current fitness level. By focusing on just a few key muscle groups and performing gentle, static holds for 30 seconds at a time, you can make significant strides in your flexibility journey. The best part? You only need to dedicate five minutes a day, five days a week, to reap the benefits. Huberman says that, contrary to popular belief, you don't need to push your body to the point of pain to see results. In fact, research suggests that micro-stretching, or stretching at a low intensity of around 30 to 40 percent, can be more effective than pushing yourself to the limits. If you prioritize consistency over intensity, you can unlock a host of benefits including greater range of motion, reduced stiffness and pain, and even potentially lowered inflammation and disease risk. Here's where I'm going to make my first comment. Micro-stretching, what I've been calling limbering or stretch snacking for years, is definitely effective for gaining or maintaining a decent level of flexibility, but it will never get you to the higher levels of flexibility. For example, I definitely would not have ever achieved the front, pancake, and middle splits, or the head-to-toe stretch, with just low-intensity stretching. With that said, for the average guy or gal who's just looking for decent flexibility, micro-stretching will do. To fully appreciate the power of stretching, Huberman says it's essential to understand the biological mechanisms at work. As we age, our bodies naturally experience a decline in flexibility, with some studies showing a 10% decrease in range of motion per decade from age 20 to 49. However, a dedicated stretching routine has the potential to counteract this decline and improve the mobility of our limbs and joints. The communication between our nervous system, muscles, and surrounding connective tissue plays a crucial role in determining our flexibility. During his podcast, Dr. Huberman delved into all the nerdy intricacies of this communication, highlighting the four major types of stretches and their unique benefits. By understanding these mechanisms, we can better tailor our stretching routines to our individual needs and goals. If you want all the nerdy details, check out the scientific articles I will post with this video and blog. One of the most compelling aspects of stretching is its potential to improve overall health and well-being. Beyond alleviating feelings of tightness, increasing flexibility can contribute to better balance, posture, and physical performance. It also can help reduce pain and inflammation, with some animal studies even suggesting a potential link to reduce cancer risk. While more research is needed to fully understand these connections, the evidence points to the far-reaching benefits of a consistent stretching practice. While dynamic and ballistic stretching, which involves swinging your limbs and using momentum, can be beneficial prior to performance-based activities in sports, static stretching forms the foundation of a solid flexibility routine. Research by Bandy and others reveals that holding a static stretch for a minimum of 30 seconds is the threshold for reaping flexibility benefits. However, the frequency of your stretching routine is equally important. A comprehensive review by Palma and others found that stretching at least five times per week with a total stretching time of five minutes per muscle group per week yielded optimal results. To put this into perspective, aim to perform two to four sets of 30 second static holds per muscle group five days a week. If you find it challenging to commit to this frequency, you can modify the protocol by holding each stretch for longer, such as 60 seconds, and reducing the frequency to every other day. The key is to find a balance that works for you, while still prioritizing consistency over duration and intensity. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, PNF stretching, also known as contract-relax stretching, takes advantage of the intricate communication between our nervous system and muscles to enhance flexibility. By combining stretching and contracting of the muscles, PNF stretching can effectively increase joint range of motion and in some cases even improve contractile strength. The science behind PNF stretching lies in the presence of intrafusal spindle fibers and Golgi tendon organs, or GTOs. 
Spindle fibers communicate muscle stretch to the spinal cord in the brain, activating motor neurons to contract muscles when a stretch becomes excessive. GTOs, on the other hand, sense the load or tension on a muscle and can inhibit motor neuron activity to prevent injury when the load is too high. By alternating between stretching and contracting muscles, PNF stretching leverages these protective mechanisms to safely and effectively increase flexibility. A basic PNF routine involves stretching a muscle group, then contracting it isometrically for five to 10 seconds, followed by a brief relaxation period and a deeper stretch. Repeating this cycle two to four times per muscle group can lead to significant improvements in range of motion. In addition to static and PNF stretching, incorporating exercises that target antagonistic muscle groups can further enhance flexibility and overall performance. Antagonistic muscles are those that work in opposition to each other, such as the biceps, and the triceps, or the quadriceps and the hamstrings. By alternating exercises that build strength on one side and length on the other side, you can maximize your flexibility and your range of motion. For example, the stronger that I get this, the easier it is for this side to relax. This phenomenon, known as autogenic inhibition, occurs when the contraction of one muscle group triggers the relaxation of its antagonistic counterpart. By strategically incorporating antagonistic muscle group training into your routine, you can optimize your flexibility gains and prevent muscle imbalances that can lead to injury or limitations in range of motion. The possibilities here are endless, but here's a short clip from one of my advanced flexibility programs illustrating this point. So when you're doing your ballistics, like say you're doing hamstring ballistics, and if I was standing, I'd be kind of pulsing towards the ground. Something that beginners don't understand is the strength that's involved in your hip flexor muscles to pull yourself down into the position. In gymnastics, they call it compression strength. The ability to compress yourself down into position so that you get a nice forward fold. Now, I'm using a lot of strength in my quads and hip flexors to do that. So you'll get a little bit of that strengthening and you'll kind of pick it up as you're doing your stretching. You'll kind of find, oh, when I pull from my hip flexors, I can get deeper and it feels better. It doesn't hurt my back as much. But if you want a couple drills to work on just the isolated strengthening of this side of the joint so that this side of the joint can relax, here's a couple good ones. Sitting on the ground in this long sit position, Put your hands on the ground in front of you, stay tall, and try to lift your legs up. You can either just hold it, or you can do it for reps. What you'll feel is a strong contraction here. And then you would wanna go and do your forward folding, your ballistics, and, and use that principle of strength here to create length here, strength in front, length in back. Other exercises that you can do is for your straddle positions, same thing, you're here, and you can point your toes, and lift, you can do it for reps, or you can hold it for time, or you can go and do standing versions or hanging versions actually, where you are up onto a bar, and anything which is like a toes to bar, or knees to elbow, um, or L sits is good for this hip flexor compression strength. So here's one version. Jump up, hold the bar, and just raise up. You can do it again for reps or time, doesn't really matter. So work on your strength in the front so you get length in the back and you'll have much better forward folding. So strength and length. While the protocols outlined by Dr. Huberman serve as a valuable starting point guideline, it's essential to remember that everybody's bodies and goals are unique. The key to success lies in adapting these approaches to suit your individual needs and preferences. Start by identifying the muscle groups that you feel are the tightest and most restricted in your daily life. Focus your stretching efforts on these areas, gradually expanding your routine as your flexibility improves. Remember, the goal is not to push yourself to the point of pain, or rather to create a consistent and sustainable practice that you can maintain over the long term. Incorporating stretching into your existing fitness routine or even your daily life can be as simple as taking a few minutes to stretch while on a phone call or during a break at work. This is the micro-stretching or stretch snacking I referenced earlier. By making stretching a regular habit, you'll be well on your way to unlock greater flexibility, reducing pain and stiffness, and improving your overall quality of life. 
As you embark on your flexibility journey, it's crucial to approach it with a mindset of patience and compassion. Remember, the goal is not to become a contortionist overnight, but rather to make small, consistent improvements that compound over time. Celebrate the small victories along the way, whether it's being able to touch your toes for the first time or noticing a reduction in stiffness after a long day at work. These milestones serve as a powerful reminder of the progress you're making and the positive impact stretching can have on your life. If you need a personalized stretching program, check out our top-rated Flexibility University curriculum at gotrom.com. This bundle of programs is made up of targeted exercise for all levels. Plus, we always include targeted tissue work exercises prior to stretching, which makes the stretching two to three times more effective and much more comfortable. The bottom line is this. Dr. Huberman's research and protocols offer a nice starting point roadmap to lifelong flexibility, but it's up to you to take the first step. By prioritizing consistency over intensity and embracing a personalized approach to stretching, you can unlock a world of flexibility and benefits beyond what you ever thought possible. Ready to begin? I'll see you in the programs because remember, you're always just one step away from building or rebuilding your perfect body.